Hello and welcome to another Nuclear Craft update video. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit weird because I just recorded this entire video and then found out that my mic was muted the entire time. Um, so I'm sort of talking over the top of it. Um, so we'll just have to see how it goes. It might be a bit weird in places because I don't really know what I'm talking about. And I had all of the update notes in a Word document that I didn't save and I got rid of it because I thought I'd finish the video and I didn't check to see if the sound had broken or not. But we'll go with it anyway. There's been loads of updates for 2.10H. Uh, and the place to start is with what's going to come up for molten salt reactors. So molten salt reactors are still not in the game. That's going to be in the next update. But you can see here that I've got some new Technic NAC alloy. This is going to be the base for the coolant. Um, so that's made with sodium and potassium, um, which isn't in the game yet, but there will be a way to make it in 2.11. Um, there's a couple ways I want to do that, but we'll get to that when we, uh, when we actually add it to the game. Um, so that actually makes Eutectic NAC alloy. Um, Eutectic means uh, mix in a way that means that it has a very low melting point. Um, now it can itself be used in the molten salt coolant heaters, which are going to be basically the coolers for molten salt reactors. It can be used directly, um, so that's sort of the equivalent of like a water cooler, um, because it's sort of like the vanilla um, material for cooling. However, you can then mix it with things like destabilized redstone, molten quartz, molten gold, uh, if it's not in the game, then Nuclear Craft will add it. These things like Molten Gold, you can obviously get from Tinkers and Molten Redstone, you can get from Thermal Expansion. And then they can be used in the uh, uh, coolant heaters, sort of similarly to the Redstone coolers and Gold coolers, etc. in the normal fission reactor. But we'll talk more about that when we actually get to adding Molten Salt uh, reactors proper in the next update. Um, next thing, some of the recipes changed. Well, a lot of the recipes changed, actually, because I've added these four new things. Server mechanisms, electric motors, uh, linear actuators, and the machine chassis. The machine chassis is used in a lot of the recipes, um, especially for the machines. Um, it's sort of like the base that you can sort of think of it as the equivalent of the machine chassis from Ender.io, or the machine frame, I think it's called, in Thermal Expansion. Um, the only two recipes is the manufacturing and the uh, alloy furnace that don't use the chassis because the chassis requires alloys and you need those two machines first before you can actually uh, get alloys. All of the parts are pretty simple. The electric motor, server mechanism and linear actuator require very basic materials. I think the only non-raw material that they require is copper solenoids but they're really easy. So it's not like IC2, like super micro craft. It's not really annoying. Um, it's pretty simple uh, and it just means that I can mix the recipes up a bit more because before they were really boring and they were basically sort of like a tiered uh, system. So you can see here, this is the recipe for a server mechanism. Um, pretty simple. And the electric motor is again, pretty simple. Gold nuggets, steel ingots, really easy. And then finally, if I can find it, linear actuator is a piston and a copper solenoid. Those are the two like previous steps that you need. But, uh, but they're pretty simple. And they just, as I said, just mean that I can make the recipes a little bit more versatile. Next thing that I added was advancements. So it turns out that advancements was a lot easier to add than I thought it was, um, because obviously when I updated the mod, achievements had changed. There's no more achievements. Um, they've now become advancements. So it, it turns out that you can just add them uh, through a vanilla sort of style mechanism. You basically just add loads of JSON files and you can make this massive advanced uh, system, which uh, vanilla sort of does for you. It makes the whole table for you. you don't have to, I don't have to actually do anything to add all this. I just add the advancements, say which one is the parent of the last one. So I just say, for example, that the Neptunium advancement is after the fission reactor and it will automatically put that in the table properly. So it's really cool actually that you can do this. Um, I know a lot of mod pack makers are using the advancement system, especially Sevtech. If you played Sevtech, I know that's a really popular one at the moment. Um, it uses advancements. Um, because it's just a really nice system. And there's also loads of um, references in there. Mr. Dil Mr. Dilkington, if you know that reference, you're an absolute legend. Um, and there's other references in there just to make advancements a bit more fun. Um, so there we go. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty nice. Um, next thing, um, I just need to come out of the game quickly uh, to show you. Uh, it's a new biome. It's basically just a nuclear wasteland biome. Um, at the moment, it doesn't actually have any um, special generation. It just has basically a big wasteland but it does have glowing mushrooms it's a really nice place to find glowing mushrooms if you don't want to scour the nether for them and of course glowing mushrooms again don't really have a use right now so that is a bit annoying but they will be used as the base for radaway which will be used to remove radiation similar to how they do in fallout but anyway next thing decay generator now has craft tweaker and jei support so first of all you can see in jei you can actually see the recipes um what decays to what um and uh you can also use craft tweaker to add your own recipes and remove the recipes if you want to. But for example, if we look here, we can look at um, depleted curium, that goes to plutonium. Um, the plutonium then goes to depleted uranium, and then the uranium goes to uh, lead, um, IC2 lead, because that's the first one it found in the ore dictionary. But basically, it now uh, shows the recipes and means it's a little bit easier to actually see what it does. And 
Um, I have had some people say that they want to use the decay generator as like an early game power generation in their mod pack, and they want a way to basically add their own custom decay recipes, um, which sounds like a pretty cool idea. So hopefully that will make it easier for, to do that. Um, next thing, which is pretty awesome, connected textures. Finally, connected textures for um, transparent reactor casing and also electromagnets um, are finally in thanks to the connected textures mod. So if you have the connected textures mod installed, I think it also does the connected textures for chisel and immersive engineering. But if you have that installed, then you'll get these connected textures for the, some of the nuclear craft blocks as well. And if you don't have it installed, then you basically just won't see the connected textures. It's not like a requirement. You don't need the connected textures mod. But if you do have it installed, you'll see the connected textures. So thank you very much to the devs of connected textures mod for that. Next thing, lithium ion cells are finally in the game. It's actually quite big. Finally, you have a use for lithium manganese dark side and also hard carbon. Um, so it's a pretty simple recipe for a lithium ion cell. Well, I say it's simple. It's actually quite expensive. And then you can use these in MFSUs, you can use them in energy cubes, I think, um, from Mechanism, and also energi the Energizer from Thermal Expansion, anything that can accept power from IC2 or uses uh, Forge Energy or RF or whatever, and you can charge it up. Um, I'm just checking in there because I thought they had a slot, but it doesn't anymore. Um, but you can drain it and uh, power it up as usual, so it's like a portable energy device. Uh, so like a battery, it's basically just a battery, and but more importantly this can be used in the recipe for the lithium ion battery, which finally has a recipe now. Uh, it's quite expensive, but it's a really, really qu quite powerful energy storage. I think it holds 64 million forge energy or RF. Now importantly, if you place it down, um, it will by default be all inputs, but if you shift right click, you can change it to outputs and then disable. If you normal right click, you'll show the energy stored as before. Um, and you can see here that uh, there's three options, as I said, uh, input, output, disabled. If I break the block and then put it down again while shift, or while sneaking, uh, you'll see that the uh, sidedness is re retained. If I just put it down normally, it will just go back to the default. But e in either case, it also retains its energy, both in your inventory and also uh, on the ground. So that's pretty cool. That's finally in the game. For ages that wasn't, and I want to get it done, so now it's finally done. And obviously the same goes for the Voltaic Pile as well. Um, isn't obviously as good as the lithium-ion battery, um, but it uh, works in pretty much the same way. And you can see here it also says the EU power tier, which is like the for the MFE, MFSU, whatever. It's the power tier for IC2, um, if you use IC2. Uh, next thing, Corium is now uh, made in nuclear meltdowns instead of lava. So before it was lava, which didn't really make much sense. Um, so now it makes Corium. Um, it's a pretty nasty material. It gives you weakness and poisoning, as well as just being like lava and, and setting you on fire and doing a lot of damage. Um, it's not used for anything, so you just want to get rid of it. Um, so it's pretty nasty stuff, made in nuclear um, meltdowns, watch out for that stuff. Um, and it's just a little bit nice, it's just a little bit cooler than lava, it didn't make much sense that it dropped lava as I say. So there we go, that's Corium. Pretty cool. Next thing, uh, speed upgrades, there's basically been a couple config options to deal with speed upgrades. Um, so what you can do now is you can change, um, first of all, the power laws for the speed upgrade. So by default, um, the speed uh, power law is uh, linear, which is 1 and the energy power law is quadratic. Um, and that basically means that the speed increases linearly with um, energy upgrades, uh, with speed upgrades, but the energy requirement increases quadratically. Um, so sort of as the square of the number of speed upgrades. And you can change that power law in there. Um, any integer will work. And also the multipliers, which are one by default, basically say how effective a single speed upgrade is. So if I was to halve these numbers, then it would basically just mean that the effectiveness or the effect of a single speed upgrade would be decreased by 50%. Uh, so this was just something that was requested in, in GitHub, so I decided to add it, and it's there if you want to use it. Uh, if you're making a mod pack or whatever, and you just want to change how speed upgrades work, if you think that the way they're implemented at the moment is a bit weird, then you can change that. Um, so that's pretty simple, but there it is. Next thing, uh, pretty big, uh, you can use buckets and other fluid containers to interact with machines. So beforehand it was really annoying to uh, deal with um, taking uh, fluids in and out of machines. Um, but you can see here, for example, I can right click with a bucket on this uh, nitrogen collector to get some nitrogen. I can then right click on the chemical reactor to put the nitrogen in. You can see it actually goes into the slot. And then I can right click with some hydrogen buckets and I can initiate the, uh, the reaction. That's going to make some ammonia. Um, let's just put some speed upgrades in there to speed up. But basically this means that you can now start filtering um, before you even pulled out any of the fluid. So you can to get, to get the buckets, put the buckets into the filters for the endorio conduits or thermal dynamics pipes or whatever you're using, and hopefully that will make things a little bit less tedious for filtering fluids. So there we are. That's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, next thing, uh, RTGs that are adjacent to each other, um, they used to sort of play up a little bit, but that's now been fixed. Um, so beforehand they used to sort of 
uh, put power into each other and it sort of gets stuck, the power gets stuck. You can see there it's now working, 100 RF per tick. Um, in previous versions of Mutual Craft, it probably would have given you 0 RF per tick because they, some, they sort of share energy. Sometimes they try to pass energy to each other and the RF would sort of get stuck and not go anywhere. Um, so that's now being fixed. So you can put banks of RTGs in a big line or in a big area or whatever, like I know some people do, and you won't have any trouble with that. So there we go. That's, that's a simple thing, but it means a lot. Now, I seem to waffle for like five minutes here. I just had to cut out like loads of stuff. I don't even know what I was talking about there. And I, as I said, don't have the, the change log that I, I, I made. But basically, uh, what's important to say is that Craft Weaker support is fully fixed now. The audit dictionary should work as required. Um, and also, another thing is that uh, some of the uh, methods for recipe removal, some of their names have changed because there's now two ways to remove recipes. That's pretty much all that's important. Next thing is that now you do not need fuel rods anymore. You don't need the uh, fuel rods um, fuels and you don't need the empty fuel rods at all um, so if you have any of them you can still use them they won't like just totally break you can still use them but the point is that you no longer require um, fuel rods in the fission reactor uh, you can just put the fuel straight in there and it sort of makes more sense because you've already got cells in the reactor um, so um, the normal fuels will deplete as normal they will reprocess as normal and so basically fuel rods are being phased out that's the idea that's so you can see here um, that all the depleted fuels are in. Um, loads of people have said like there's missing textures for nuclear craft, like 52 missing textures. Well, here we go. There's there's all the textures in there now, all 52 types of fuel. They're in the game now. There's no more missing texture errors, and the new uh, type of fuel has been phased in, i.e. no fuel rods. So there we go. That's now totally sorted, and you no longer need any of that stuff. And if I remember correctly, the rest of the change log was pretty minor stuff. Things like the amount of heat you need to get a fission, a fusion reactor started is now proportional to the size. So, for example, a size 10 fusion reactor will require 10 times the amount of energy to heat up to the ignition temperature as a size 1. Um, other things like uh, the EU to RF conversion, that was a bit uh, broken sometimes. Sometimes machines wouldn't totally fill up with, e, uh, with RF because uh, the uh, conversion ratio is 4 to 1. And so sometimes you'd need less than a single EU to fill up the machine. Um, that's now being fixed. And sometimes that was actually a big error because it caused things like electrolyzers to stop working correctly. Um, so that's now being sorted out. And the final thing I can remember is that the GUIs of machines have now been fixed because sometimes if you were looking at the tooltip for a fluid, it would sometimes get covered by the JEI uh, interface on the right. And so now I've ordered the rendering correctly so that that doesn't happen. So now the GUIs look better and they don't like get covered by JEI stuff. But I think apart from that, uh, I am pretty much done. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too choppy and it wasn't too obvious that I was talking over the top. Uh, obviously there's no game sound, so that's a bit obvious. Um, next video I want to make, obviously, is uh, the fission reactor tutorial. And then I want to make the fusion reactor tutorial. And then I also might make some extra videos that show how to um, start off making fission reactors. Because I think one of the things about nuclear craft is that it's still a relatively new mod. Not many people know quite how to get into it, um, especially if they've used extreme reactors and they're not, you know, quite used to the way nuclear craft works. So I want to make some sort of tutorial style videos how to deal with things, even just the basic fuels like LUTBU. Just give some examples of how to think about building uh, reactors, good designs. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.